Today, I've got bad news for NVIDIA GPUs. Intel responds to all of these wild CPU issues, AMD is actually releasing these, and the RX 8900 XTX could have been a monster. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you've been thinking about picking up one of NVIDIA's RTX 40 GPUs, you may want to do that soon. As a new report from the Chinese site Board Channels and later reported by WCCF Tech, they claim that the supply of NVIDIA's current gen GPUs are down, but specifically, the 4060 Ti has seen a big supply cut. Apparently, supply to major board partners have seen a big drop in shipments to only a few dozen. Ultimately, diminishing supply with steady demand only means one thing increase prices. Now, it does seem like this mostly only affects mainland China, but there could be ripple effects in other markets. Of course, so far in the US, GPU prices have actually been on the decline. I'm not sure how long the supply crunch could last, but if you're able to wait it out, you may not have to worry. Either way, for now, it's not looking great. Next up for today, I've been going over this story on Intel's 13th and 14th gen CPUs causing crashes in games for quite some time now. And of course, if you love keeping up with all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to GamerMeld. Either way, the last update I discussed was about Gigabyte's new baseline profile setting in their BIOS. Basically, it's supposed to set all of the settings to what Intel actually suggests, and this hurt Intel's performance by an unbelievable amount. I'm talking it made their i9 CPU perform more like an i7. 7. It hurt gaming performance. I mean, it's a complete nightmare for Intel. Now, obviously, that one seems like an outlier, though other manufacturers are still seeing at least some drop in performance. Well, in today's story, a message from Intel directed at motherboard manufacturers has leaked. And for the most part, it looks like they're blaming them. Though, as I've discussed before, they've been doing this for a while, yet it never caused an issue with past parts. Still, Intel stated, quote, Intel has observed that this issue may be related to out-of-specification operating conditions resulting in sustained high voltage and frequency during periods of elevated heat. They then go on to explain some of the root causes and encourage manufacturers to provide end users with a default BIOS profile that matches their recommended settings. Now, it does seem like this is the cause of the issues, but I only have one problem. Why didn't Intel mention this years ago, before these issues started? It almost seems like they wanted the boost in performance until it became too much of a liability. I mean, it's not like Intel just found out motherboard makers are doing this. I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked. And really, that's my main issue here. I get that board partners aren't blameless, but it just seems like Intel is only doing this because they have to. And once again, I really think reviewers need to re-review these CPUs. Next up, if you remember in my most recent video, I discussed a really odd CPU rumor. A new series of Epic processors built on the consumer AM5 socket deemed Epic 4004. At the time, I mentioned you probably shouldn't take it too seriously. Well, it looks like it's the real deal, as a user on the Chipel forum apparently found a slew of these processors briefly listed on eBay by a seller in California. In the forum, they even mention a potential 32-core CPU, but of course, if there were a thing, it would likely be based on AMD's Zen 4C little cores. Still, that certainly would be an interesting chip. Either way, there are seven chips here. The Epic 4244P, 4344P, 4364P, 4384PX, 4484PX, 4564P, and 4584PX. And like I said in that video, they are claiming that some of these are X3D chips, meaning they come with 3D vCache. Now, this one I will say is extremely weird because from what I understand, 3D vCache is only really used in gaming because it makes cross-chiplet communication much faster, all thanks to the massive amount of cache. Well, if this is right, AMD may have found some way to utilize the extra cash in other ways. Either way, this is a really interesting story, and at least for now, it seems to be true. And lastly for today, AMD's top-end, next-gen RX 8900 XTX would have been the most insane GPU launch from AMD ever. A few months ago, rumors began circulating that AMD's next-gen RDNA 4 would come with up to 9 compute chiplets, which is a 50% increase over the current Gen 6. Well, in a new piece of source code shared by known leaker Kepler, it looks like that leak was correct. 
As you can see, there are in fact 9 shader engines for this GPU. Now, if we took Navi31's configuration, that would make for a total of 144 CUs, which is exactly a 50% increase in core count. But get this, had AMD used Navi32's configuration, that number would have gone up to 180 CUs, for a 87.5% core count increase. Meaning even before any clock increases, we could have easily been looking at an 80% plus performance increase over the 7900 XTX. And according to another user on the forum post, it was actually above 200 CUs. So for example, let's say if AMD was thinking about using 24 compute units per shader engine, we would be looking at 216 CUs, meaning AMD could have potentially made a GPU with well over a 100% increase in performance above the 7900 XTX. But alas, if you've been following this channel, you know that AMD has since canceled their top-end RDNA 4 GPU. GPU, making this one of the biggest could have been moments in PC hardware history. Of course, from what we've seen, AMD likely made this change to focus more on AI, which is understandable given the revenue it's been generating for Nvidia, but it's still a very sad day. So while that does it for today, are you bummed about the GPU AMD could have released? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe, and as always, have a great day!